Okay, welcome back everyone. In this video, we shall explore the dynamics of a stir tank heater. So stir tank heater, as you can see in the schematic. And we shall explore the uh, we shall explore explore the relevant equations, the relevant dynamic equations that describe this system. Okay, as you can see here, we have our fluid stream going into the tank. We have our impeller. Okay, so the impeller is going to keep everything in a well mixed state. Let me write that down for you. That's the implication of the impeller. We have our heating rods. These two, the this rod, this coil that goes through is responsible for heating the fluid to our desired temperature. By controlling the power to this rod, we'll be able to manipulate the temperature inside the temperature of the exit stream. All right, so the after the stream is heated, if you, if you have been following the lecture series, in the previous videos, we discussed that we were our discussion was limited to an overflow system. In this schematic, as you can see, we have a we have a valve, and the valve will be responsible for controlling the flow. Therefore, we will probably need a valve. Excuse me, a valve equation that describes the exit flow rate. Okay, so hopefully you have a little intuitive idea of what's going on, and now we shall explore the information regarding this process. For on, in the first three rows, what I have for you is all the upstream variables that we know. And if you read through with me, we have the volumetric flow rate, our volumetric flow rate Q, we have our temperature, the inlet temperature, and the heating rod. And in an actual situation, all of these upstream variables can be measured via both analog and digital sensors, okay? Next up, in the last two rows, as you can see, we have the heat capacity CP and the average density of fluid. And by average, I mean at bulk mean steady state temperature whatever that may be all right right now we're just using symbols so we have our we have our fluid properties right here and let's see if there's any other observation that we might that might be helpful to us one more thing um this tank is open to atmosphere let me make that a bit more clear so the uh the tank is not closed like there's no lid on the tank so we're gonna i'm gonna just say i'm gonna point it out for you guys that it is open to atmosphere and if it is open to atmosphere atm atmosphere then that means that the operating pressure the overhead pressure is going to be the atmospheric pressure okay all right and similarly this valve is discharging at the atmospheric pressure okay given all of that information what shall be our next step like every good chemical engineer we're gonna start off with a mass balance mass is conserved unless you're in a nuclear power plant then you might wanna get a new degree a nuclear engineering degree anyway so the accumulation term the change with respect to time in the mass that is present in the tank that shall equal an inlet term minus the outlet term so we only have one inlet and one outlet as labeled here okay so we know the volumetric flow rates and we know the density density times volumetric flow rate is going to give us our mass flow rate that's our inlet stream minus rho q out and our outlet stream just pointing out the obvious if so that everybody can follow 
so far let's see um, the mass of the tank is what we're trying to is what this differential equation is gonna model the dynamics of the mass inside the tank are gonna be captured by this equation in addition we no longer we are no longer we don't have a nice equation like an overflow tank to give us the outlet flow rate therefore up till now we have one equation the mass balance and two unknowns the one equation that we have this equation is going to give us the mass in the tank at any given time but we also have another unknown our next un our q out needs to be sorted out and remember when i said that we're going to be using a valve equation so let's go over that real quick most commercial valves have most commercial valves their flow rate the discharge flow rate can be modeled by this concise and very simple equation okay now okay give me one second all right so this is the valve coefficient just to label these out for you and this will be given by the vendor and the vendor is the valve model like the characteristics of the valve are going to determine that oh and we have the uh, that's the specific gravity of the fluid sg of the fluid that we have so i mean let's see we know the density of the fluid right so the specific gravity is just going to be density divided by the reference the density of the reference fluid which in this case is going to be just water for most commercial valves it's usually water all right given that let's uh, see if we can simplify this equation now this valve equation turns out to be q out equals cv square root change in pressure 1000 over rho everything is in si units for now now if you can if you guys have been paying attention we now have another unknown which we haven't really we haven't explicitly accounted for so so far we have two equations and we've added an other unknown so we have three unknowns right now the second equation will be responsible for giving us q out but we still need to find delta p which is what we're gonna cover in the next part of this video okay so stay tuned